All right, hello, I am Matt. This is the first and only stock speed run for the weekend of March 19th, 2022. It's a busy weekend for me, and I only have time for one recording, so apologies for that. If you are unfamiliar with what a stock speed run is, you can check this video description for an explanation and also a disclaimer as to its content, seeing as this is one and only. Let's see if we can make it a good one. Come on, give me something good. Ah, uh, Sin Alloy. It is alloys made of sin! Church ain't gonna like that. Okay, let's see here. Whoa, that's an interesting chart. They were flying high back in 2018, but not so much anymore. I mean... Well, okay, this is interesting also. Because, yes, sure, we all know what happened in early, early 2020, but most, most charts you look at turned around and started to go much, much higher by October of that year, but not these guys. They found a bottom then on an insane amount of volume. I kind of wonder if something happened in that year, but unfortunately, I don't think these articles go back that far. Wow, was October 2020 really over a year ago? Start of COVID seems just like yesterday, doesn't it? it does to me. Anyway. Uh, but then it started to ride high from there, and it is almost back to where it was... Uh, end of 2019, not quite back to these highs of 2018, but maybe they could get there depending on what I see. So let's see, what do I see here? Uh, let's see. Er eh. These earnings are not exactly spectacular, although the quarterly paints a different story than the annual. It's a bit odd. How is 20... Well, okay. No, I was just about to ask myself, how is 2020 so bad? But I realize it's a stupid question. When I'm looking at the charts for 2021... Actually, I wonder if these are outdated. Has... Quarter 4 of 2021 not come out yet? Where is quarter 3 report? Commencement of rights... Rights offering? What is this? I don't really like the sound of that. Production and distribution of piping, tubing, and specialty chemicals today announced that it will, has commenced its previously announced rights offering. I am actually not too sure what a rights offering is. I don't think I've heard that term before. Pursuant to the rights offering, companies distributing non-transferable subscription rights to each holder of its common stock as of 5 p.m. Subscription rights may be exercised at any time during a subscription period, which commences today and ends at 5 p.m. on December 16th, 2021. So whatever it is, it's over, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. One subscription right is being distributed for each share of common stock held as of the record date, with each subscription right exercisable for 0 0.08 shares of common stock at an exercise price of 12.75? Sorry, I'm trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to digest that. Oh, here, wait, here's, for example, if you owned 1,000 shares of our common stock on the record date, you would be granted subscription rights to purchase an aggregate of 83 shares of our common stock at the subscription price per share. This just seems like a roundabout way of doing a follow-on offering uh, by basically choosing who can... Well, actually, no, not choosing who can buy, but basically saying, hey, only current shareholders can buy more if they choose to. What happens if they don't choose to? What happens if I own these thousand shares, but I don't want 83 more? And I'm guessing the subscription period is kind of like an ex-dividend period where for it to enact itself, for you to be counted amongst those that are applicable, or not applicable, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, qualified, yes. Qualified to purchase these shares. You need to hold it, or have the shares as of 5 p.m. after market hours. It's kind of, it's kind of strange. Eastern Standard Time, November 29th through December 16th. And then you get these rights. You get the rights to 
Actually, I, the name makes more sense now. Rights offering. They are they are offering the rights to to an offering to 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 their shareholders. Basically, I have never seen this before, but it's a very interesting way of doing a share offering. I'm not entirely sure how beneficial something like this is. Like, I don't understand why you would do this over just a regular offering. Because limiting who can purchase the offering surely can't be good, right? Maybe I'm... Maybe I'm missing something. Oversubscribe... If the rights offering is oversubscribed... Based on subscription rights is... In full is entitled to oversubscribe for additional shares that remain unsubscribed. Ooh, interesting. Maybe the subscription rights period is when you have time to say that you want to purchase these shares. And I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but I just find this fascinating. I've never seen it, I've never seen an arrangement like this before. So I think I just answered my question from before. Why would you limit yourself to who could purchase your shares? Because let's say I own these thousand shares, right? And I didn't want to purchase these 83 more. It sounds like after a certain period of time, I'm not too sure if this is that period uh, or, or what that period may be. Those shares, then these 83 possible shares then get labeled as unsubscribed. And then they become up for grabs to other people who wish to oversubscribe to their app to their allocated amount of shares. The rights offering is oversubscribed and any exercise of the oversubscription privilege will be subject to proration as set forth in the offering document. That's just that's just very interesting. I've never seen an arrangement like that. Okay, that was quite that was quite the read. And it's for ten million dollars. Okay. Uh oh, here's the third quarter I was looking for. I guess third quarter was their last one. I mean it says the next one is March tw wait, today's the nineteenth. Oh, shit, this is gonna be next week. I kinda wonder what that's going to look like. Can this rise continue, or is it going to drop off? Is there some kind of um, outlook for quarter four included in here? That's what I would want. Announces closing of highly successful 10 million. What makes it highly successful? Define highly successful for me. This company, special chemical, blah, blah, blah. Uh... Good, that looks good, that looks better. It's kind of slowing growth between quarter, quarter two and quarter three, but I'm not not going to read into that too much. Uh, I do like this profit increases. They remain in line with sales. That's that's usually a good sign. Profit margin, 8.4 to 17 to 20.9. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. And, and actually, you know what? That This chart belies this. Wait, wait a minute. A gross profit, 18. This is 8. Gross profit is synonymous with earnings, isn't it? Oh, maybe not. Because it says net income. You know, I'm still unclear on the difference between gross profit and net income. But whatever. Uh, focus on blah blah blah. Rights offering resulted in the sale of a total of this many shares. The company stock aggregate gross proceeds from the rights sale was approximately ten million, which was their goal. After giving effect, I guess there was enough people that wanted to purchase these shares that they got this many off. After giving effect to such new share, the company has the common stock issued an understanding as a date hereof. Uh, after giving effect of such new share interest, company has this many. Oh, no, sorry, I got confused. Okay, that's... I thought this was a disproportionate amount of shares because I apparently forgot how numbers worked for a moment, but it's it's fine. Fired. Okay, so it seems like there was 
You know, I, I kind of like this. I can see this is a bullish sign where enough people wanted to purchase extra shares for twelve seventy five. Actually, how does that compare with the price of the time? Let um, me go one month, six months. Twelve seventy five. It was above twelve seventy five at the time, so I can definitely see why people would want it. I wonder why they chose to price it at twelve seventy five. Maybe because at the time they were making the decision, it, it was down here, and they're like, "Eh, let's see what happens." But then it started to go up from here. Interesting. It started to go up after that announcement. That could also be considered a bullish sign. Uh, I mean, a lot of what happens in the future is going to depend on the following earnings report that is going to be coming out next week. Popular among insiders, blah, blah. And actually, you know, so long as I have this tab here, uh, I want to look up... Uh, I always mean to look this up. What is the difference between gross profit and net income? Determine how, mu how much profit a company earns from the production and sale of its goods and services. Gross profit is sometimes referred to as gross income. On the other hand, net income is the profit that remains after all expenses and costs have been subtracted from revenue. Why? <sighs> after all expenses and costs have been subtracted from revenue, why is that not considered profit? Profit is income minus expenses, right? That's literally the definition. I'm going to look up definition of profit. A financial gain, especially the difference between the amount earned, the amount spent in buying, operating, or producing something. It's literally what it means. And I'm not usually a fan of, you know, using dictionary definition to prove my point, but, like, that's, that's what it means! Words have meaning, damn it! Net, on the other hand, net income is the profit. Here, you just said it! You just said profit! You just, you just said it right there! You can't see it, but I'm pointing at the screen right now! That remains after all expenses and costs have been subtracted from revenue. So, like, what... Profit a company earns from the production and sale of its goods and services. But like, what expenses and costs are not included in the, in, the, in this calculation then? In gross profit versus net income and help investors determine whether a company is earning a profit and if not, where the company is losing money. First of all, companies' profits earned for subtracting the costs of producing and distributing its products. Well. What, what, what cut, that's, what other expenses are there? You produce things and you distribute things. Do they count, like, stuff that's tangentially related? Like, let's say they have, an, let's say they have a human resources department. Is the money spent in there not included in gross profit? Because it doesn't technically, it tangentially has something to do with producing and distributing those products? That's stupid. Costs. Cost of goods sold. Direct costs involved in producing a company's goods. Direct materials, direct labor, equipment costs, repair costs, utilities, shipping. I guess I I guess I I guess I was kinda right. It's these things that go into that. Operating expenses. Interest. Uh okay, in interest I can kinda see. Uh overhead or selling. Income tax. Okay, income taxes kind of makes sense. All right, you know what? Stuff like stuff like interest, stuff like especially taxes. Taxes kind of makes sense to have to to make to make the distinction for because that can have a big a big effect. All right, you know what? I'm kind of done. I'm kind of done making a rant about that. Uh, I should I should start looking at more important stuff. I wanted to read about uh, popular amongst insiders. We can go look at that ourselves. We'll look at holders here. Percent, percent shares held by all insiders, 17.92. That's actually a very high number. You don't usually see numbers that high. See insider Ross most recent transaction sale by Officer Sarah Cunningham. Oh no. 
stock award, stock award, stock award. Purchase at twelve seventy-five. Ooh, you know this guy. Oh, private fund management. That's not. But wait, wait, why are they considered an insider? Beneficial owner of more than ten percent of a class of security. Oh no, maybe that's why. Wow, they purchased. 219,000 of those 700 and something thousand shares at this 12, at this 1275. God damn. Uh, purchase price, purchase price. Okay, uh, jeez. All right, five seconds. Uh, conversations, I want to see conversations. Show me, show me, show me, show me. No, I gotta reload the page because it's stupid. Come on, come on, come on. Sit down, anyone? Up? Shit, okay. Um, I mean, I, I can't, uh, you know, all right. Apologies. Because I realized I probably spent too much time looking at stuff that maybe wasn't all that important. I spent too much time trying to research what gross profit versus net income means and what what the rights offering was. I mean, it was still interesting topics to discuss, I think, but I guess it wasn't really all that important to figure out how, uh, how Sin Alloy is working. But then again... There's nothing really that I saw that would tell me that they're a bad company, necessarily. I mean, yeah, sure, those... I didn't really like those yearly charts, but they... But, you know, those, those yearly numbers, they can easily be explained by, by COVID. The numbers definitely look like they're getting better in 2021, and I would not be surprised in the slightest if the numbers coming out next week look good, uh, better... Uh, if, if not better so in quarter three. But I also kind of wonder if that expectation is priced in, because it has come back has come back significantly to where it was uh, well before COVID. I'm kind of wondering if it can hit those 2018 highs again, and I'm not I'm not 100% convinced. But you know what? I'm convinced enough that they can continue to do well. I don't know about a buy, because they have been on a, on a tear recently. And staying a buy when something has gone on a tear like that, that isn't necessarily correlated to anything that I can really see it being justified with. Doesn't make me want to hit this button, but I think I, I, I think hold is reasonable for this. Because I think I think there's a reasonable enough argument that the following quarter's earnings are going to be well and that it can go up from there. Um to 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 warrant a hold for this. I think so. And actually you know an idea I had while looking at this is perhaps I can start uh I can start videos where I investigate terms I, that, I, that I am unfamiliar with instead of having to fit those into these speedruns somehow. Maybe I can start a series of videos where if I come across a term I am unfamiliar with, I can, uh, I can spend another video looking those up in a similar fashion as runs. But then again, I am just thinking out loud here. I mean, if you would like to see videos like that, please let me know. Um, otherwise, uh, I will catch you in the next one. See ya.